Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast with your host, Charles. Enjoy. What's up, everybody? It's episode 34 of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast. Uh, today, we're going to be sitting down with Quinn Flagg. He's the co-founder and CTO of the app called Coindust. And what Coindust is, is it's very similar to Acorns, where when you make a purchase, it rounds up your purchase to the next whole dollar and invests that change in either Bitcoin or some sort of bundle of crypto. Um, and today we're going to be talking about, you know, why the app was created and then, you know, some of the stuff that went into actually creating the app. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so Quinn, before we really jump into everything, can you just give us a little bit of background on yourself and what you were doing before you got involved with cryptocurrencies? Yeah, um, so uh, mainly background with me is, you know, I'm a software engineer, um, went to San Francisco State and kind of stayed in the Bay Area and kind of just been around tech my whole life um, and have been kind of working the, uh, the startup grind uh, for the past five years or so um, and kind of building, you know, mobile apps and websites um, and kind of, you know, being the full stack engineer um, and doing that. And then kind of, I think it was the 2017 boom um, is when I really started to like investigate crypto. Like I first heard about like Bitcoin um, in like 2012 um, and didn't think much of it and didn't think really understand what it was. And then it started to take off in 2017 and I was skeptical um, still and kind of, I guess, uneducated. And my roommates were just downloaded Coinbase and they were like starting to get into it. My One of my roommates was like, yo, I bought Litecoin at like $30. Like he's, I have a feeling it's going to hit like a hundred dollars, you know, in the next few months. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, and I was just like, how was it? Like, I didn't even know how to buy it. I didn't even know what Coinbase was. Um, and then came into, there was a, a documentary on Netflix called Banking on Bitcoin. And they like forced, forced me to watch that. And it kind of just talked about like the origins of crypto and, you know, with Satoshi and Bitcoin and like the early adopters talks about like the Winklevoss twins um, and their take um, and kind of got me very, and I was just like, holy, holy crap. Like, yeah, this is, this is the future of finance and kind of like the future of where currency needs to go. Um, and so that's where, and then I remember, I think the next day I bought my first, um, I bought some Litecoin cause my roommate was telling me about it, uh, telling me to, you know, oh, it's going to go to a hundred dollars. So I bought some Litecoin and that kind of started the, the downfall effect or not downfall, but I guess, you know, the trigger. And I just started buying more and more and more. Um, and, um, and that's kind of how, yeah, I got into crypto and kind of just been, so yeah, it's pretty much been, you know, software engineer and kind of just mainly in tech and then fell in love with crypto due to it being tech and also just being around the, uh, you know, around finance, um, and kind of being a money guy as well. So this is kind of the perfect fit for you. Like you were saying, you've kind of been in that, you know, software and startup, you know, grind for the past five years. Um, and you heard about Bitcoin in 2012. I feel like almost everyone's story is the same where they hear about it and then they kind of dismiss it or they don't put as much time and effort into learning about it as possible. And then they hear about it later and they're like, OK, mm -hmm. this is, you know, a recurring thing. Let me check this out. Um, and you said you watched that documentary Banking on Bitcoin. I don't know if it's still on Netflix for anyone who's listening. I recommend it. Um, it's a great intro. Um, and so you're still a software engineer, but you are now helping build this app, uh, Coindust, with a couple other yes. people, uh, Michael Nye and Nakos. For anyone who's listened to this podcast, I've had both of them on prior. Um, so can you just give us a brief overview of what Coindust app is? Um, if I have it correct, it's similar to like the acorns of crypto. Um, I don't know mm -hmm. if that's something that you guys like to associate yourself with, um, but can you just give us a brief overview on why you created it? Yeah. Um, so it's essentially, you know, I think um, that's actually how we describe it as well. It's just, it's the acorns for crypto because it is the easiest way to 
get the um, you know the most you know uneducated person around crypto to um, understand what it does. Uh, and really, the reason we want to create it was mainly because um, it was for like I like I feel like Nye and um, Neko's their main objective is to create products that make adoption of crypto easier for the average person. Um, and I feel like, you know, with bitmaps, that's what they're trying to do. Um, Coindust, that's what they're trying to do. Um, and so I was very drawn to that because I'm very pro crypto. And like I said, I feel like it's the um, necessary step for um, for currency. And so I think that um, having something like CoinDesk, which just makes it very easy for, you know, the average Joe to just sign up and not have to worry about what coin to buy, what coin, you know, um, you know, which, what to do with it. They can slowly just start slowly accumulating cryptocurrency and kind of be ready for what I feel will benefit them very much in the future. Um, and so of what it is essentially for those that don't know what Acorns is essentially is you, um, log in with your bank accounts um, and you know you can your checking account or credit cards um, and we will get um, transactions um, um, and then essentially we will round up each transaction and do a micro investment in Bitcoin or your um, um, or the coins that you've specified in a portfolio if you wanted to kind of um, have a more diverse portfolio or a more aggressive one um, so Prime example is say, you know, you went to Starbucks and purchased coffee for $4.30. Um, we would get that $4.30 transaction and then we would round that up to $5 and do a 70 cent purchase of, say, Bitcoin um, and then store that for you. And so just slowly over time, you'll, um, you know, accumulate little, little chunks of, uh, of crypto. And then hopefully, you know, a few years, depending on how much you're spending, you'll, um, or how many transactions you're performing, you'll slowly get um, a very well-established portfolio um, and stuff that, you know, and hopefully it's grown with um, the adoption of, you know, Bitcoin and um, cryptocurrencies in general. So I actually um, downloaded Acorns sometime in college and it was a great intro just into kind of growing a portfolio slowly over time. Um, and it's great that you don't really notice it. You know, you swipe your card, like you were saying, something's 430 and it just rounds it up to an even five. You don't really miss any of that money, and then slowly over time you've seen that, okay, this account is now growing. Um, so thank you for explaining Acorns and then you know how it's similar to the app mm -hmm. Coindust. Um, and then I really liked what you were saying about how you know, Nye and Nakos and yourself, because you were involved in this, um, mm -hmm. are focused on adoption. And you know, I think a lot of people, when I talk to them, when I first talk to them about buying crypto, it's okay, you got to set up an account, you know, you go on this exchange and you buy it. Um, and, you know, that's essentially what you guys are doing, you know, an account gets set up and they buy, you know, periodically. Um, but it makes it sort of fun and easy. Um, and it's not like they're, you know, investing a whole ton of money right at the mm -hmm. beginning, um, which I feel like is what a lot of people are kind of skeptical on. It's like, okay, I don't want to you know, invest a large portion of my savings into something that could potentially drop off a cliff at any point. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, I was going to ask about, you know, what kind of portfolios put together. You said you can specify it um, so you can just go all Bitcoin. Um, are there any, can you go into the details of what other potential coins people could be buying? And so um, we are, um, I can't say officially which, uh, what, who we're partnering with, we are partnering with an exchange, um, and, um, and they're essentially, we're going to use them for, you know, purchasing, um, the crypto and also storing the crypto on, uh, on a wallet. Um, and so it's really, it comes down to what they support. Um, I know they support, um, the, the basic ones like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, XRP. Um, I don't know how diverse they are um, because I'm actually still actively reading their their API and kind of integrating them fully. But it will be the heavy hitters um, I would um, that you'd expect that say like Coinbase has, um, and um, but I it won't go down to you know the the ones the all the the altcoins that you would see in like you know um, pretty deep in like coin market cap or anything like that. But the ones that are kind of the more established um, coins um, will be um, available. 
There we go. And we'll have like suggestions on, um, we'll have like suggestions on like, you know, by default, we'll just start you off with Bitcoin because we want to make it as least overwhelming as possible. Um, and then, um, as a user, you can, you know, create a portfolio and say, you know, for 60% of my transactions, I want it to be Bitcoin for 20%. I want it to be, you know, Ethereum and then, you know, 10% XRP and 10% Litecoin or something like that. And so you can, you'll be able to specify the percentages of what you want. Um, but also we'll have portfolios that, you know, it's like you want kind of a conservative portfolio, probably be more Bitcoin. Um, if you want a more aggressive of portfolio here, probably some more volatile coins than Bitcoin um, that you can um, put in your portfolio to help, you know, increase your profits, but also you could lose your profits. So, yeah, some <laughs> of the some of the majors, you know, you see them up at the top of coin market cap um, kind of sounds like you guys are trying to stick to those, which I want to appreciate and to think is probably the best call. Um, and the fact that you just start out default all Bitcoin um, is another thing that I fully support. So can we now get into the details of, you know, how this app was actually created? Because this is an extremely, you know, fast paced and highly regulated market. So I know you are on the you know tech side, you've built it up, um, but you're probably there along the process. So can you just talk about you know, how you got around, not got around, but how you complied with some of these regulations, how you've kept up uh, with competition, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so um, I think the first approach is kind of recognizing, like, I feel like a lot of um, uh, companies that kind of start up in the crypto realm, um, you get overwhelmed initially through you're saying the regulations and kind of the um, idea of that there's probably there's a lot of moving parts that you don't necessarily really understand um, and kind of you know have a good idea but just quickly dismiss it due to the illusion of um, too high of complexity for you to implement it um, and I think CoinDust is a great example of. Um, recognizing that illusion um, and kind of breaking it out into steps because essentially there are companies out there that um, you can use their product and essentially with their help, you can kind of let them do what they're experts in and utilize their expertise in um, kind of helping um, you create your product. Um, and so what I say by that is, um, for instance, you know, like I said, a user will log into their bank account um, through CoinDust um, and we get transactions. Um, and so that could be, that right there could be the first, um, uh, you know, speed bump that someone that wants to create an app that doesn't necessarily, um, that could be like the first thing, like, oh, that's too hard. I don't want to worry about that because you have to worry about, oh, I have to store bank account information. What if I get hacked? What if like something like that? Uh, but there are companies like, for instance, this is what Acorns uses as well, but we're using a company called Plaid, uh, P-L-A-I-D. And there, what they do is they have an API for storing bank account information and then giving you data relative to the bank accounts that the user logs into. Um, like bank they support like bank of america chase all the big heavy hitters in the u.s and also some banks in canada spain i think possibly france as well um but they're slowly adding more and more but essentially you're as the creator of the of this creator app i'm now i don't have to worry about you know worrying about storing highly sensitive credit card information or ACH information in our servers, I can just tell Plaid to do that. And then Plaid will provide me the data that I need. Um, and so it's the exact same thing with purchasing the crypto as well. Um, and so by partnering with an exchange, um, instead of creating our own way, A, it's going to be cheaper because we don't have to essentially get a buttload of crypto into wallets that we can have people purchase with us. Um, but also we can um, trust that the exchange um, is, or like they've already established their wallet system. They've already established their um, everything with, um, you know, what they need to um, be PCIe compliant with storing um, transaction data. Um, they already, you know, I'm sure they already have like, you know, extremely secure servers. Like, you know, Coinbase has actually articles around how secure their servers are. And it's actually quite incredible what Coinbase has set up. Uh, but you kind of really uh, delegate all that security stuff to them. And so by being, um, by using these tools, you can kind of be the, um, 
the middleman between the two and kind of just be use the both the best of both products. And so that's what co- kind of CoinDesk is doing is essentially, you know, we're getting being like, oh, I need transactions. Okay, I'm going to use this service and grab transactions. Oh, I need to buy um, cryptocurrencies and store it in a wallet. Okay, I'm going to, you know, use this exchange um, and do that. And then we're kind of just the middleman between the two. Um, and with that, again, it re- relieves a lot of anxiety, especially from a developer standpoint of um, the big thing is, again, security because of how sensitive the data is. Um, and, you know, obviously I'm we set up a very secure server so that the user doesn't have to worry about, you know, someone taking their funds, but also in the very, very, very unlikely chance, because it does happen. Like Google's, Google's been hacked. Um, every, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people, big, you know, people have not been hacked, but if someone were to hack the server, then they don't necessarily can't get any useful information because we're not storing it. Um, and so I think by having that security and kind of, again, being the middleman and kind of using other companies and um, using their expertise in what they do, um, it makes it a, a lot more approachable to kind of create a new company, especially an application in the crypto environment. You pretty much hit that right on the head there. That was, you know, everyone I've talked to who has these ideas and wants to build something, it always kind of fizzles out when they get into the weeds because they're like, I, mm-hmm. I, I really don't know how to implement all of this stuff. Um, but there are these third parties that can, you know, you can kind of ride their coattails um, and they have products specifically for that. You mentioned Plaid and then you also talked about using the exchanges. Um, so I really appreciate that. And to anyone who's out there listening, you know, this isn't something you have to do entirely on your own. Um, there are so many resources that you can use um, and you just need to do a little bit of digging to find them. So mm-hmm. there's a um, there's a saying, um, and I'm sure everyone's heard it, but it's very much true in essentially, you know, developing and engineering. And it's essentially don't reinvent the wheel. Um, and, you know, there's a bunch of, you know, companies like Plaid, you know, Coinbase has an open API, uh, Gemini has an open API, um, and even open source stuff on GitHub, um, where essentially you need to do something specific. Don't write it yourself, just borrow what's already been used and kind of, like I said, don't reinvent the wheel. Someone's already done it. Um, and so there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of people that get overwhelmed by the idea of like, oh, I need to do this and I have to create the wheel. But it's like, no, someone's already done it. Just figure out how to use theirs. Exactly. Spot on. So we got, you know, the actually how to build and, you know, how to overcome these huge speed bumps that you were talking about. Um, can we dive into, you know, this is a very fast paced industry um, and things move extremely quickly. You're left in the dust if you kind of leave your ideas out there and don't continue to push forward on an almost daily basis. So can you guys or can you talk about some of the stuff that you guys do to kind of stay one step ahead? Um, because there are some apps, you know, I was doing a little bit of research and I came across this app bundle. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. It sounds like it's very similar to what you guys are doing. So how are you guys, <clears throat> sorry, how are you guys, you know, staying ahead of the competition and what are you guys doing differently to differentiate differentiate yourself from the competition? I mean, it's, I think there's like, it's very much like kind of like, uh, if you look at companies like, I think the biggest one is Apple. Um, and it's not that Apple has never been the first to, do it they've been essentially presumed as the first people to do it correctly um, and obviously that's a you know you can get many different opinions and a lot of people would disagree with that but i think a lot of apple success has kind of been um they have an idea it's not the original idea but they implement it in a way that made um, the adoption of that idea um very um easy and very kind of fluid and just made kind of made sense um and so i think that's kind of the approach that we're kind of doing with a or with a coin dust um, where it's yes, there are, you know, kind of similar products out there, but I think with our user interface and kind of the support we have behind it, um, I know Nye and Nekos are doing the adoption tour with FOMO hunt right now um, and kind of spreading word about it. And um, kind of like, again, the message that it brings with like, you know, making it easy to adopt um, and kind of get into this um, overwhelming 
you know, new market of crypt- of cryptocurrency and kind of helping that. Um, and so I think, yeah, so I said, it's like to stay up with it is just making sure that you do it right. Um, because it's not necessarily a race to who gets it out first. It's a, it's really who does it correctly um, and is able to kind of build around that. Um, and another prime example is, um, you know, Airbnb. Um, Airbnb was not the first ones to do, um, you know, short-term rentals and that stuff, but they were the first ones to kind of take a different approach on it and do it right. Um, and, you know, now they're a $40 billion company. Um, and so it's, yeah, so I said, it's like, yeah, there's the other competition, but you also just making sure you do it right and make sure it's programmed well. Um, and also make sure you can get it to the most, the biggest audience possible, um, which is what Nye and Echoes are doing with the adoption tour. That kind of goes back to this whole don't reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, you guys are just taking something that may already be out there, slash is already out there, and you're doing it right, as you're saying. Um, you know, you're you're working on the UI, building it up, making it great on that end. <clears throat> and then you've got people like Nye and Nakos who are out there on the adoption tour, kind of getting that message out there. Um, and I think the, the, the marketing of a product is huge in this space. We've seen, you know, countless projects that may have been better products, but in the end, um, you know, they go nowhere because people, they aren't you know, networking properly, they aren't promoting their product properly. So you guys, you know, you both have your expertise and you're focusing on them to make this perfect product. Um, So, you know, they're out there on their adoption tour, they're spreading the word for it. Um, You're on here talking about it. Um, So what have you guys got coming up in the next 12 months? What are you most excited for with regards to the app? Uh, I think um, the biggest one is obviously launching the app. Yeah, there we go. Obviously that, launch, launching the it. app. Yeah, yeah. But but um but um I know we're we are gonna do, you know, an alpha and beta. Um I am excited to um I'm excited when we can announce the um who we're partnering with um and kind of um the you know and kind of what they bring to the table to really help turn this idea um into a reality with what we truly want it to be. Um but it's mainly, yeah, just announcing that and then kind of just getting slowly getting it out and um, getting the hands of users and getting uh, the feedback back. Like it's very, as an engineer, it's always really exciting when um, something that you've kind of, you know, worked on for so long is finally being consumed by um, by people and people are benefiting from it. And, you know, it's kind of getting people excited in a way is making their lives better um, kind of thing. So it's what I'm from the engineering standpoint and just like, you know, creating this product is um, that's what I'm most excited for is just really seeing the response behind it. And hopefully it's a good response, but you have to be open to, you know, criticisms and, um, you know, massage the da- massage the code and you know, update features accordingly. But it's really just getting feedback on, you know, this, this app that, um, you know, that, again, turning it into an idea to reality and kind of getting feedback on that process. I mean, you guys are very early in the process. Um, and you talked about, you know, the alpha and the beta that you're looking forward to. And then also this big partnership. Um, I know it's really tough to put any kind of, you know, hard date on things. Do you have a general timeline for the listeners on when they might be able to test this stuff out? Yeah. So, um, from a development standpoint, again, me working full time um, and kind of, you know, picking away at CoinDesk when I have free time, um, which is usually around, you know, I have a few hours every night is when I'm kind of poking away at it. I'd say it's about um, 75% done um, from our MVP, the most, you know, minimal viable product standpoint. Um, and so it's actually entering very close. And so I think I can't, again, over promise, um, kind of thing. It was probably, I'd say November, December, okay. um, would be when people can start expecting a beta. Um, and then hopefully launch, um, depending on how the beta goes, um, relatively quick after that. Um, but, um, but yeah, so it should, it's, it's getting very close. Um, and, um, like I said, I'm starting to, um, slowly get like for instance get you know early early builds into um nye and um 
Neko's phones so they can start showing it off um, during the adoption tour. Um, so we're getting it's it's getting very exciting. It's getting to that point where um, it's you know all the hard work is starting to like you know starting to show and like you're starting to you know get excited like holy crap like this is actually becoming a thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I hate to press you with the uh, you know timeline because there's always stuff that comes up. Anyone who's ever mm-hmm. you know built anything or started any sort of business, you run into hiccups and things get pushed back every now and again. So I, I don't want to you know put that on anybody and have anyone thinking, okay, you know, end of year is for sure a thing. Um, but it is good to know that you guys are getting close and that we we will have it in our hands soon. Um, Mm -hmm. so I, I really appreciate you kind of giving some sort of date for it. Um, so you've talked about a lot, you've, you know, talked about how you can, you know, kind of piggyback off of others and use these third parties. You've talked about kind of this startup culture. Um, you've given us some background on yourself. Um, there's one last thing I do want to talk about. I know you guys are still very early in the process and, you know, this is kind of a question for after launch and, you know, once the product is up and running. Um, but if you had to start over and scrap this app and, you know, kind of start back at square one, um, what's the first thing that you guys would do to kind of get back to where you're at today? Um, the reason I like to ask this is, you know, for a lot of people who may have this idea in their head, um, they're starting at square one. So, I, it's nice to give them, you know, kind of the first couple steps that they need to take. Um, and I know you talked about kind of the whole process already, but what's the very first thing that you would do? Yeah. Um, so I remember when I, when Nye approached me with the idea, um, he essentially had a Dropbox um, from um, the designers and, um, and it was, you know, it was completely filled out, you know, and essentially he went to them with an idea. They, you know, brand, they created everything, created all the mock-ups and screens um, and, you know, all that, all that stuff. And it was like, you know, I looked at it, I was like, oh, this is great, blah, blah. Um, and then kind of looking into, um, as I started developing it, um, kind of we, um, kind of, it was kind of, it was not necessarily, it felt like, like, you know, just a bunch of like ideas that were kind of just like, here's what we want. But it, um, like I talked about, you want the um, MVP, again, the minimal viable product, essentially all the bare necessities that you need um, to launch your product and for it to be kind of what you want it to be. Um, and then slowly you'll add, add features to that, but literally the minimal part. And so um, I think what we didn't have was necessarily that. Um, and so I know I've had a lot of conversations with um, Nye and Echoes um, around asking them, what is the minimal viable product? And there are many times where, you know, I'll send them a message being like, hey, do we need this feature for MVP? Do we need, um, can we scrap this thing? And so um, I think before getting into, oh, I want to, you know, I'm going to start building this application. And even before getting the designer um, is really focusing on, um, getting again the mvp set so that you have an exact set of you know of what you actually need to get done um and then from there start branching out and i think we um it was you know got the the designer and you know started implementing the idea but i think it was before we fully um had the idea of what the again the mvp of the product would be there we go. Um, so that's kind of where I would start would again, kind of really write down set in stone what the minimal stuff you need to launch your product. Um, and then once you have that foundation, then start showing that to others so they can build off of that foundation um, and, and go from there. I mean, there's just so much out there for the taking. And I know a lot of people have these huge grand plans and you know, they want to spread themselves as wide as possible. But from everyone that I've talked to, it's you really just got to focus on your core business or core product. Um, and I really like this whole idea of the minimal viable product and sticking to that first. Um, from the sound of it, CoinDesk app, it should just be a, you know, you're buying either Bitcoin or a portfolio of altcoins and Bitcoin mm. um, just with the swipe of your credit card or debit card. Um, and that you know, pretty much is the core business right there. Um, Mm -hmm. So I know, you know, I, 
I'm near Nikos and near uh, Nye, and so we we hop on the phone every now and again and talk. And they have these huge grand plans, and I commend them for it. But at the same time, you know, like you're saying, you really do have to just focus on this MVP um, and build out from there. So to anyone who's trying to build anything, you know, focus on on your core business is pretty much what I'm getting from that. Yeah, and in a way that like by doing that also is it really can help, you know, relieve a lot of anxiety because there could be features where you are, you know, you absolutely love the idea about it, but it's not necessarily needed for the launch of your product. And so by enable to you kind of being able to push it under the bed and, you know, use it for a, a, a V2 release or something like that, it can really, again, give you just a conscious list of what you really need and not get overwhelmed by all the fluff that, um, of, of that, you know, of that stuff, like of the extra stuff. Um, and re- again, really focus on this is what the product is. This is what it's going to do. Um, and this is what I need to get it to work. I'm really glad you brought that up because I feel like half the people I talk to kind of get overwhelmed in a sense um, with these big grand plans that they talk about. And then it just turns to nothing and they never start. Um, so focusing on that just core business is a great way to start and not get overwhelmed with all of these, like you were saying, these features that might not be necessary to start with. Mm -hmm. Um, So I want to thank you for coming on. We talked about a ton of stuff. So many people that I've talked to are interested in either building apps or products or some sort of business. And I feel like the biggest thing for them is, you know, that starting point and they get overwhelmed with trying to do everything themselves. And I think those are two of the big things that we did talk about this episode. So I think it'll be very, very helpful for pe- for people who are listening that kind of want to create and start their own business or app. So uh, and yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate you know giving me the opportunity to come again talk about CoinDust and also just like you know the the approaches that we've done to kind of create a company and the the crypto space um, and. Um, I'm always happy. One thing I love to do is, you know, I love to help others, especially other engineers, um, you know, a learn how to do stuff, but also kind of be that, um, voice of reason and input if there's any questions. So, um, just tell the audience that, uh, like, I don't know if my DMS are open, but essentially just tag me. I'm like, I'm always happy to, um, to talk and like, especially give advice for free, um, and kind of just, you know, help you kind of fulfill what you need to do because, you know, I'm all about helping people kind of reach their potential and uh, do their dreams. Um, so anyone that's trying to start something and needs help in terms of like, especially the engineering side um, with advice um, and kind of just help alleviate that, at least that part of the anxiety um, in, um, around the company and what you essentially need for that, um, I'm happy to um, to help. I really appreciate that you bring that up. I always try to coax my you know guest into you know talking about how they want to help and that their dms are open and you just you know you came out and you're like hey i i would like to help anyone who's interested so i'm gonna have a link to your twitter um in the show notes if there's anything else that you want me to put in there i can get that in there um obviously links to you know coindust um nako's and nye's twitter um, and anything else that you know might be relevant will be in the show notes. And Correct. again, I really appreciate you coming on, and I'm really looking forward to when this you know app goes live and we can give it a test. Awesome! Yeah, I'm I'm really excited too. And like I said, thank you so much for having me on here. I, uh, it was a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. All right, guys, that wraps up another episode. And I just want to take a quick second to ask you a huge favor: if you found anything in the episode helpful or it's been inspiring to you in any way, I just ask that you share it with your friends, family, anyone you know on social media, um, and hopefully we can help them out as well. Have a good one.